Trek King of the Nerds Season 3 Episode 7 Recap, and I'm going to get into it today with Brendan Noel in just a moment, but I want to first thank our sponsor for this episode of Robin's Podcast, and those are our friends over at Nature Box, and whether you are competing for the title of King of the Nerds or just going through your everyday life, uh, people are busy, and that's why you need great tasting, healthy snacks from Nature Box. So do what I do and get plenty of great tasting and also nutritious snacks. They've got over 100 snacks, all approved by nutritionists, scientists who study the periodic table of elements and that they know what goes into great snacks like sriracha roasted cashews, peanut butter nom noms, pistachio power clusters, big island pineapple. There's more great tasting snacks than there are Pokemon characters. And now you can get the chance to try Nature Box for free with a trial box featuring five of the most popular snacks. You heard me. Free snacks. So start your free trial right now by going to naturebox.com slash R-H-A-P. You know you're going to snack. Get smart about it with NatureBox. Go to naturebox.com slash R-H-A-P. Get a free trial box of delicious snacks, and you'll always end up feeling great and never like you have the zombie virus like Lily. <laughs> Live from the RHAP studios, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who just ordered the Blu-ray of Event Horizon, Rob Sesternino, hello everybody, and welcome to our Season 3, Episode 7 recap of King of the Nerds, I'm very excited about this, and of course, today, we're, we're I'm excited, but I'm a little sad that we are going to be without Mark Solera, who is on assignment this week, but I am joined by a man who is the Bowser of King of the Nerds podcasting. Here's Mr. Brendan Noel. Oh, come on, I'm not the toad. That's like the you obvious want pick. To be the toad? I think I want to be the toad. I thought I. It was always my understanding growing up playing Mario Kart that toad was very fast. That might have been just a lie that my older brother perpetuated, but that was my understanding. I think I'd rather be toad than Bowser. I feel like that's insulting to call somebody you're the toad on the podcast. I just felt like toad was just like a hanger on. It's true. He definitely he was the tag along to Princess Peach. Who, you know, I don't know how many cool trends she was setting, but yes, who yeah. Toad or is Toad is a is a uh, male or a female? Oh, that's a good question. Toad might be genderless. Is Toad genderless? I it I want to say be. Toad is a, is a woman. I don't know. I, I I would be more inclined to to male maybe, but who knows? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let me know what to Google to get that <laughs> answer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Toad is just sort of like, uh, just sort of boring, uh, just sort of there. Um, let's see, let, let us know, I might have to, uh, email, uh, Kenny Huang and, uh, ask him. He would be the authority to ask him that. He would be the authority, so. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, two people gone in one fell swoop, Amanda and Rachel. Very surprising, we were talking last week, we thought that this was going to happen, but we didn't know how it was going to go down, and this was an interesting way to do it, although I'm not, uh, I'm not thinking that I loved how they did it. Yeah. So, we'll talk about everything that happened here in this episode and set up the finale, uh, which is going to be next week here, where we're going to get down from Final Four to one Ultimate King of the Nerds, plus the return of all the other Season 3 contestants back here uh, for the eighth and final episode of King of the Nerds uh, next week. Now, uh, in other Robinson Podcast nudes, uh, I am uh, campaigning to be king of the podcast nerds, uh, and uh, we are having daily voting going on at podcastawards.com for Robinson Podcast nominated to be uh, king of the entertainment podcast nerds and also king of the People's Choice Podcast Award nerds. Yes, you will be sitting atop the throne of podcast games. <laughs> podcast games. I, I think you will. Yeah. I, re I remember to cast uh, my first vote for you, uh, or was it my second vote? The, the second vote after the first vote today was the one I, I cast for you, I guess is how you would put it. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, and so uh, you can do that at podcastawards.com. All right, so let's uh, talk this through. Uh, the two tasks that were in this episode. The two battles, of course. Uh, the episode started with the competitors finding out that the teams were gone. Uh, it was going to be individual from here on out. Is that how they've done it in the first two seasons, Brendan? 
This was how they did it. Was after after six episodes, they dissolved the teams and moved into this format where the the nerd war became individual, and that winner, that individual winner, became the one person who who got to automatically send somebody into the the nerd off. Okay, so in this game, which I actually kind of like games like this, which is everybody has to like try to fill as many answers in the category, things that apply in the category as possible. And ultimately, I don't know, it was kind of a a crazy thing that you sort of like, there was a queen alien that was going to spray you in the face with acid. Yeah, an an unseen kind of like queen monster with with tentacles that was shooting things at it. Again, kind of the Big Brother production budget we're going on. We have have enough things to kind of uh, suggest that we squirt things in the face with them, but I guess not the budget to show whatever was this monster that was doing the, the, the shooting of liquid at them. Yeah, I will say that this task was a little Big Brother. Oh, very much, especially. I mean, Curtis definitely had fun with the, the double entendres about about the, the squirts in the face and then still being a virgin, so... Yeah. Yeah, they really had fun with this one. Okay, so if you had two strikes from the Queen's Acid, then you were done for in this challenge. Correct. And so uh, it ends up being where Ben is going to win and Amanda is going to uh, be the one kicked out of Nirvana. And Amanda was an RHAP favorite all through this whole season. She definitely was. She was somebody who we all liked. We, we enjoyed her personality, what, was she, what she was bringing to the game in terms of strategy and that's kind of why I'm not loving how they just sort of sprung this at the end of the challenge of like, oh, by the way, since you were the two losers, we're now basically going to go to sudden death and the loser goes home right now. I think for one of the more entertaining characters of the season, that's not how you treat them when you're kicking them off in the next to last episode of the season. Yeah, did Amanda get the rawest feel of the season? I think she did. I think that... I think we're in the same episode when Rachel gets, I think, more fanfare in her exit than Amanda, something is wrong. Yeah. It really, well, I was sort of like, wait, what are they doing? What, what, what's, what's happening now? I mean, this is for, for keeps? This is the loser? This is going home? Yeah, and I felt like they, they, I mean, they spread it on them just as much as they did us, and suddenly, like, two minutes later, she's gone, she's giving everybody hugs, and it's like, what just happened? Yeah, she's gone over periodic table of elements. Yeah, she, she, she was staring at the thing the whole time. Another, another Big Brother comparison, because uh, she should have been studying all the things in the house, like they always do on Big Brother, they're counting everything. <laughs> yes! It is to count all of her periodic elements. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. All right, so uh, that ultimately, that was Amanda versus Lily, but let's just talk about the challenge uh, in general. Um, I thought there was some interesting categories. Like, I really do like uh, stuff like this. Like, I like, uh, you know, drinking games like this where it's like, okay, name, like, different, like, uh, you know, brands of coffee, and then, it, you know, you can't think of one drink. Uh, I think that's very fun. Um, they started off with, uh, was the first one the top grossing 100 superhero movies? I believe, yes, that was the first category. Boy, uh, that must be a deep list, and the Hulk must have really sucked to not crack the top 100. Now, which, which Hulk are they talking about? Because I feel like, is there a movie called The Hulk? Because mm-hmm. I feel like there's like, I think it's just Hulk, which is like the Ang Lee one. Yeah. And there was like The Incredible Hulk, which was the Ed Morgan one, and now I guess they're going to do one with the Mark Ruffalo character from The Avengers. So I, I, I think that it might not be in the top 100, but I also am not totally yeah. sure that like The Hulk is a movie. So, but yeah, I also, I mean, I feel like when you when somebody, when Rachel gives you Dark Knight Rises, and Dark Knight is still on the table, you know, like, take that rather than risking it on The Hulk. Right. Like, you should just go through it like, okay, uh, Star Wars A New Hope, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Return of the Jedi, Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Like, it feels like uh, things should really be uh, exhausted before uh, we're getting to uh, things like The Hulk. Yeah, so like you said at the beginning, uh, it, it, some interesting strategy to get to the Event Horizon before listing, yeah, every Star Wars movie, every Star Trek movie, 
Uh, I don't know what, what was happening with Caitlin. No, I see, you know, I, I don't want to get the two things confused. So this is top gross, top 100 grossing superhero movies. So that, that would not be the Star Wars movies. And then there's also right. the top 100. That was a separate category, not in terms movies. of quality, but, but in box office gross. But here's what's crazy, that the Hulk, uh, the 2003 Ang Lee version, which I assume that she was talking about, grossed $245 million worldwide. See, well, okay. For superhero movies, but I can see that being in the top 100. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, are they just not totally sure of what movie she's referring to? Is it, is it, is it using the definite article disqualifying her? I don't know how rich it is. Yeah, yeah, the movie is there. called Hulk. Uh, yeah. That's the 2003 movie. Um, because she said, The Hulk? Is that what, the, you know, they said, I'm sorry, that's not on the board. That feels a little picky. That's, you know, that's not like how Family Feud would do it, but. Yeah. No, I, I do not like it that if that's what they did. It, it's possible that they could have done that, but I, I am not super well versed in the like mythology of the Hulk movies. Maybe there was a movie earlier that was the Hulk, mm -hmm. so I think they're being real sticklers there. Yeah, I think so. Too much of a stickler, Bobby. I think so. Okay, uh Drivers in Mario Eight. Yeah, I I do not remember the last Mario Kart game I played. It might have been Four or five. Eight was a little too recent for me. The only real advantage I think that they gave them with eight is I feel like the more games that come out, they're adding new drivers to the game. So what was the what was the, the name of the person who eventually knocked? Um, uh, was it Rachel out? Do you remember? Do you remember who she suggested who wasn't a driver? It wasn't like a two off the beaten path of a pick. I think that was a that was around where. They went through a lot of people getting right answers, and, and I know that Curtis mentioned on Twitter that that game lasted a lot longer than we saw on TV because they were too good at some of the categories, and we saw that because eventually they had to condense a lot of the questions down into a montage. Yes, yes. Uh, the drivers in Mario Kart 8 are uh, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Yoshi, Toad, Koopa Troopa, Shy Guy, Baby Mario, Baby Luigi... Baby Peach, Baby Daisy, uh, Bowser, Donkey Kong, Wario, and Waluigi. Oh, that's, a, that's a deep list. So and then there's games. unlockable drivers also. Oh, wow. I'm not sure uh, if that counts also. Yeah, that might have fallen under Bob, Bobby Stickler. I think so. I think so. Um, also, uh, Constellations. Yeah, I and mean, I mean, that's... A when Rachel said Orion's Belt, and was immediately gone, like, I'm curious to know if that was the first answer, or they just, like, cut it there. So, again, like, I, I don't know. I was surprised that was not a constellation. I'm not up on my astrology. Can you name any constellations? Oh, God, I don't think so. It gave me, like, five minutes to think about it. Maybe I could come up with it. I don't know. It, the only thing I can think of is in Survivor 2, the Australian Outback, that they asked... Uh, Mad Dog about Tina at Tribal Council. She said, Tina is a constellation. Oh, see, they, so they should have, Rachel should have said Tina West. Mad Dog. And they would have accepted it. Yes. <laughs> what good authority. No, if they're not even taking the Hulk uh, <laughs> for Hulk, I doubt they would take Tina Weston. But you never know. Yeah, it's worth, it's worth a try. Yeah, I believe that's also when Mad Dog gets voted out. She says Tina is a constellation. Mad Dog, like many characters in Survivor the Australian Outback, gone too soon. Yes. Um, we had Pokemon characters. Yes, the original Pokemon characters, which is, there's 150 of them to name. So I'm, I'm surprised that eventually they, they well, they, I mean, that was one where they got well, went through a lot of them as well. We saw the name, uh, a lot of them. But uh, yeah, eventually Caitlin just kind of blanked on one, so. Brendan, how many Pokemon characters uh, can you name? Can I name? Yes. That's okay. the first 150 is definitely like that's my wheelhouse. That was when I played the game, so I could like I could get through a bunch of them. I'm not sure if that's like thrilling podcasting, but I know that like yeah, like from where they got to, they probably named 10 to 15, and I know I would have been able to keep going. And like Rachel said, I mean like they left a pretty obvious one on the table. I think in Jigglypuff, uh. Jigglypuff is one of the more I think iconic of the the Pokemon characters. So if you're gonna see. A Pokemon character on, you know, like a kid's backpack or something. That might be one of the, the more common choices. Of course. The Weird Al songs. I like this category. I did, too. I felt like there were some nerdy things they put in, in the categories. Like, I wasn't, like, entirely sold 
on like Shakespeare plays as well, even though there's certainly like Shakespeare has their nerds, but like Weird Al, I thought that was great. That was perfect. Uh, how many Weird Al songs could you name? Oh, I could have I could have gone a lot more. I mean, we we left you know another one rides the bus, the saga begins. We uh, that was you know I thought just like really panicked in that moment. Yeah, he, I think he definitely could have kept going if he was not just feeling the time pressure. Yeah. Um, and then we had houses in Game of Thrones. Um, not to uh, pick on Curtis, but I believe he uh, pronounced Westeros uh, incorrectly. I didn't really pay attention to how he pronounced it, but yeah, it, it sounded like he, he he tried to get a little fancy with it. So, uh, not buying it, Curtis. Yeah, uh, I did like. Was it was it Dan or was it Jonathan that the way they described uh, Rachel uh, could have gotten this? It was Jonathan. Yes, <laughs> if she would have known anything about Game of Thrones. Well, here's the thing. I, I is Ben's last name Tully as well, and that's what he said. House Tully. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so I, well, I'm a little, little, little egotistical of uh, Ben, but, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah, House Tully, not one of the, uh, you know, the first house I would think of on Game No, of I don't I don't think so. That's a deep cut, but, you know. Yeah, so there, there you go. So congratulations to Ben for winning uh, this nerd off. And then uh, we have, of course, the battle between uh, Amanda and Lily. And Lily was under the weather. Yeah, I really liked this kind of running joke of, of, of her and being, being very ill, the, the biohazard uh, kind of editing they did. I, I think my biggest laugh of the episode came when they do that thing when they're in the throne room where, you know, the winner gets $100,000 and the right to sit atop the throne of games, and they do the fake thing with the wind machine, and they have the shot of her with, like, a slow motion with the wind machine, and she's blowing her nose. That was really funny. Yeah. I, do you think that uh, her sickness uh, cost her at all throughout this episode? Was she, did you find her to be a step slow? Um, probably, yeah. I think she had she had other things on her mind, like like putting hot water on her head and how much it hurt and how much it felt like it was full of fuzz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the strategy here for the players of who they're going to send into their nerd off. Okay, of course, we know Ben, he's going to pick one person. Uh, but the other remaining people had to make a decision. And we saw Caitlin and Rachel talk strategy. Yes. Now, the, the entire strategy of this episode, I feel, well, I was not able to follow, like, when decisions were made about, like, like, the start of the episode, Ben mentions, like, well, the houses are gone, and also, or the teams are gone, but also, like, the Secret Six is basically done as well. So, and that was kind of confusing to me, because I didn't really know why they needed to end the alliance. And I also didn't understand why at the end of the episode, they all, you know, everybody's been basically against Caitlyn for most of, of the season. She's not, she's never been in the Secret Six. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, well it's obvious that we're voting Lilia. I, I didn't, I couldn't understand that. Yeah. Now, why would they send somebody into the nerd off that they felt like they that would have been an easy person to beat? Like, I understand it maybe from Rachel's point of view, right? Uh, that yeah. she felt like she was going to be going in if she was selected by Ben. Was everybody sort of thinking that? Like, oh, let's put her in because uh, she would be the easiest to beat if you went up against her? And that is an interesting to think, to, to, to point out as a that, that could be why. If, if, you, if everybody's, like, Ben is kind of a wild card, and I think that if you ask Ben, you know, maybe an hour before he had to make the decision who he was going to take, he probably wouldn't have been certain. So, yeah, I wonder if maybe they were all trying to just sort of uh, save themselves a little bit and try to go up against one of the easier competitors, one of the competitors who's a little more focused on the tissues in her pocket than maybe the, uh, the game at hand. So. Yeah. Okay, so ultimately the second game is going to be uh, Pocket Nerd. Yes, now I, I admit I have never played Stratego, but if, if this Pocket Nerds game is what Stratego is, I thought that they did a really good job of explaining this to me so I could follow along. Basically, it's like chess meets battleship, kind of. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the, the only thing I didn't understand that, that they never really explained to me was what the containment sphere space on the board did. I felt like the containment sphere was sort of like a minesweeper, where if you attacked it, you lost. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That might have been. They never they never gave a clear answer for that. I kept like rewatching the episode, rewinding, trying to, to have them explain that to me. And it didn't really come up in the show, so I wonder if maybe that's just why they, they, they cut out any references to it. But, yeah, I, I didn't know what that was supposed to do. But, yeah, I thought the game was fine. It was a little bit more of a, you know, I would have rather 
this game be more like a show than a tell kind of thing, but I understand why it's it's complicated and requires a lot of confessionals and voiceover to, to explain what's happening. But I, yeah, the, the challenges where they do, you know, the life size chess or last season when they did the battle hammer game where it was Zach versus Mary Kate, those are not my favorites, but they're still fun to watch and I like the, the strategy put into that. These sort of giant tabletop games come to life. See, I like the one with Zach and Mary Kate. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good one too. Yeah, that was very fun uh, because uh, it was fun. I Maybe mean, it was fun because Zach was in it. Yeah, part of the part of the, the, the what was fun about it was the suspense of are we going to lose a character like Zach only three episodes into the season? Of yes, course. Zach. Uh, Zach very excited in his win, and his stress was fun to watch. Also, yes, he was. He was. He was getting quite agitated at certain parts of Battle Hammer. Yes, and his distress was very fun to watch. Oh, so much distress from Zach. Uh, well, love to have him back at some point for more than just his cameo in the, the anthem a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Well, I did my part this week. Yes, I mean, but, and, and good thing you did because, uh, yeah, he had more, more, more screen time, more, more air time, I should say, in, in your 45 minute discussion with him than, uh, than in that episode. So, it was uh, an like, enlightening conversation with Zach this week on Rob's Podcast. Yes, yes, Zach was very fun. Um, I feel like I would like to play Stratego now. I would too. I think this is like a fun game. It, it feels like a game that would would um, I need to be like very alert and awake to, to play this game. But yeah, I think that I I don't know how good I would be at it. But yeah, that this seems this seems fun. I liked it. And I liked and rewatching it, knowing like a lot more about um, about the game, about the strategy, how it all works. I I was very into it, and I liked kind of seeing the, what Rachel and Lily were both trying to do with their moves. Now. Lily was like a Stratego ringer, uh, even though she made what, uh, from John, what Jonathan tells us, a, a crucial error. Yes, she she ended up kind of playing her hand a little bit. She she accidentally she, she decided to use her Astro Nerd, which is worth five, to to attack what she thought would be one of the more powerful. Um, uh, pieces on the board and it ended up not being so much and so that's what Rachel where her astro nerd was so she could have sent whatever was the rock nerds that were worth uh, one but those, those they were two. okay well oh, what was the um, what was the piece that was worth one that could take out the astro nerd um yeah I thought that the, those were the rock nerds but again yes. aware, we, we bet, don't don't take my word for it Okay, but yes, she, she ended up sort of accidentally telling Rachel where one of her more, more powerful pieces in the game was. This was not as critical of an error that, as Rachel would make later, but certainly not not the move of, of what we would assume to, to be a seasoned veteran of a game like Stratego. Yes, yes, a Stratego uh, insider. Yes, yes. Um, and so Rachel looked like she had the game in hand, but then she really started to panic. And you could see her distress, in particular, uh, as she was eating her hair during the competition. Uh, that tactic typically is uh, a big tell, I think. Oh, you do not think that a person eating their hair is kind of well balanced and stable and cool, calm, and collected? Yes, yes. Yeah, pro probably safe to assume. <laughs> Yeah, that was too bad. She, she made sort of one fatal slip of the ton and ended up uh, attacking with the wrong piece. And then, of course, frowns with her for the rest of the game. She kind of finally realized something she could do to, to try and, and get it together. But like she said, she did it about seven moves too late. And that just the timing didn't work out for her. Okay, so now let's talk about this final four uh, after Rachelle is gone. And it's Ben... It's Lily, it is Caitlin, and it is also Jonathan. Yes. Okay. And uh, we'll talk about who's going to be uh, sponsoring who, but uh, could you rank those four for me in power rankings? I am going to say that the power rankings as it goes right now are maybe, I know that I've been a Jonathan Doubter for a lot of, a lot of the season, but I think I'm going to put Jonathan... Pretty high up at the top. I, I could feel comfortable putting him as number one. I think Caitlin is the is the clear spoiler at number two, and then I'm going to put Ben at number three and Lily at number four. I think. Okay, Lily at four. Okay, so now and I, I don't really 
disagree with your rankings. Now, what is going to happen with the people that are coming back and are sponsoring one of the people? Now, this is new, right? It's, it's a little new. I mean, last season, they did also kind of a, a draft where they had them pick somebody to at least help them study. Like, the way they did the kind of final nerd gauntlet challenge, which I'm on record as, as very strongly disliking. Basically, I think there were, like, two or three times during that challenge where if they needed somebody to come over and help them, I think they got, like, two minutes to come over and help them. Otherwise, they had to, like, stay at the sideline and not talk. So I think this is going to be a similar type of thing. I almost wish it would be more like the final task on Celebrity Apprentice, where there was a lot more like engagement and involvement, and they kind of like drafted teams rather than like they are going to have to pledge support to somebody in the final two. So those finalists don't really have control over who's going to support them. They can persuade people all they want, but it's ultimately not their decision. Now, what happens if nobody selects a person? That, I think, is, is a really good question, because last season, um, it was Jack versus Kayla, and a lot of the people who came back were, were people from the, uh, the the purple team that were long-time Kayla supporters, and she ended up having a lot more uh, people on her side. Jack had some supporters, but he was not left out in the cold. It, it would be interesting to see what would happen. It would be rather sad. I... I, I'm not picturing a scenario where any of the remaining four is just like so hated that not even one person would go for them. Like, there's always one person too where they're going to be like, "Well, I feel bad for them, so I'm going to make sure they get one person." Okay. Well, can we run through the people who are kicked off, who they're going to support? I think we should do that. I mean, it's a little tricky because we kind of have to go through it as like the four of them now rather than the two of them. We don't know who the final two are, are going to be, but yeah, we can do that. Okay, you want to go in reverse order? Yeah, let's go in reverse order. So we just lost Rachelle. Yes. And Rachelle and Lily seem like they're, you know, they're good friends. They're tight. And, you know, they give the heart little heart. Up. Yes, they give the heart signs. They got voted out. So I think that if Lily's in the final two, Rachelle will be team Lily. Not Jonathan? Both part of the Secret Six, also Jonathan was helping her study for Stratego? Both part of the Secret Six, I think that, um, I think she's more loyal to, to Lily than to Jonathan. I think Jonathan is right to be a little concerned about what kind of support he can expect if he's in the file too. Okay. What about Amanda? I think Amanda, I can see Amanda going with Jonathan. I think those two are pretty tight. They've been pretty tight all game in terms of of, of the, the alliance and, and the strategy they're going to employ. So I can see um, her siding with Jonathan. And that makes sense to me. Okay, uh, Colby. Colby is one of the more interesting uh, picks. I think it's going to be possibly a surprise of where he goes. I could see him rooting for... Jonathan, purely in the sense of like, you know, you know, he got me. You know, he, it was his kind of. I mean, Amanda was the one who took him out of the nerd off, but it was kind of his doing of of setting up the sort of coalition to to get rid of him. So I could see him going purely based on like, well, I I, I want to get beat by the best. Maybe he wants to support Jonathan. So, but I, he is definitely one of the more wild card picks for me. I, I don't know really where he's going to land. See, I can see him picking Caitlin also. Yes, I can see that as well, because Caitlin was very good at making sure that that, um, that she always took the time to help him study the state of history of races. So. And they're both outsiders. Both, yes, both outsiders. They were the two who were not in the alliance. So I wonder, I think it's just going to come down to head versus heart for him. I just, with Colby, I'm not always sure how much heart comes into play, but it's that's a very possible. Okay, Heather. Heather, I think, is probably going to go... I would see Heather going with with Jonathan as well. Okay. That makes sense. How about Ori? What will, what will Ori do? One of, one of your favorites. One of my favorites, and then we'll... I'll be very happy to see him back next week in uh, whatever Never context. ending Ori. The never ending Ori, and nor should he ever end. Um, who, who would Ori go for? I think Ori... I can see Ori joining Team Kayla, I think. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know. That's that's. I think even more so than Colby, he could go really anywhere he wants. Um, once we're going back into these sort of early boots, and especially like, you know, when we get to Todd in a minute, I have no idea where Todd's going to go. But uh, Ori, 
Yeah, Roy's we're, we're going to go, I think, either with Caitlin or maybe with Lily. Well, Todd, I almost feel like I have a better handle on, because I know where Todd's not going to go. Yes, we know who Todd doesn't like, and it'll be, I mean, you know, the, the emotions there may have cooled, but probably not enough for him to want to support Lily over any of the other. He's Cersei Lannister. The oh, Cersei good. Lannister, the two-timing, backstabbing B-word. <laughs> yes, and would that make Ben Jamie Lannister? I think so. I think we I think we went over this in too much detail in the previous podcast. All right, so then he's not picking them, so then he has a choice between Caitlyn and Jonathan. Yeah. I think... I can see Todd being the kind of person who wants to go for the underdog and would probably support Caitlyn. Hmm. Didn't he lose in the nerd war or the nerd off to Caitlyn? He did lose in the nerd off to Caitlyn, but I'm not sure. I can see him being bitter. It, that's possible. I would have thought, like, it didn't seem from that challenge. Like, I don't think Caitlyn did anything to, like, incite him or, like, there's really any, like, specific ill will, but he, yeah, that's a good point. He may have been. So that's, that for me, I think, is, is a little up in the air. Okay. Uh, what about... is a little up in the air. Okay. Uh, what about Thomas? Thomas, well, that's... He, he could go, I think... I think Thomas sees maybe a bit of himself in someone like Jonathan. Yeah. So I, I, I would think that he'd probably gravitate there. You see, some of these people now are getting back into, like, a lot of Thomas's friends are people like Heather, like, who are not in this conversation. So some of those maybe more obvious uh, allegiances are kind of unclear. But, yeah, I think if I had a pick, it would probably be that he would he'd go for Jonathan. And finally, the great Jacob. Jacob. Jacob is... Jacob is just so... Like, almost a tad too normal for this show. And... I feel like we didn't get to know like a lot about him, and we didn't get to really see who his friends yeah, were. Crap, I mean, we have no it really is, because like, Smash really kind of, I think, threw him on the bus a little bit right there in that first week. So maybe, maybe he, he, he wants to support... Maybe, maybe he wants to support Ben. I can see Jacob and Ben being buddies in the house. So Okay. We'll yeah. see how it all plays out uh, next week on King of the Nerds. Um, did you notice the card for Leonard Nimoy at the end of the episode? Yes, I thought that was, that was a nice tribute. That uh, obviously Star Wars long been a, a or sorry, Star Trek and Star Wars have been have been long uh, prevalent themes in the show. There was a whole debate between the two shows uh, last year, and George Takei has always been uh, has been on this season, but he was in the previous two seasons. So certainly, King of the Nerds always had a deep love and affection uh, for Star Trek and the way that all uh, nerds did, and that was uh, that was a very nice. Tribute. Yep. Okay, well, Brendan, can you believe it that next week is the finale? It all comes down to this. It all, it all, it always comes a little too quick, but uh, it is here. The it's finale time, and much like going into the last uh, couple of seasons, I am probably making a foolish decision and in going with what is a little bit too much of an obvious pick, and thinking that it is probably Jonathan's game to lose at this point. But, uh, yeah, who knows? I, I assume when we're back here talking about this next week, it's going to be the show. Pull the rug out for me uh, once again. Yeah, Kaylin, your winner. Yes. I can see it. Ben, your winner. No, you never know. Oh, my God. I think the only person I'm definitely ruling out for winning is Lily. I'm okay. very surprised if Lily won. Yeah, it's pretty wide open. I mean, I, but this show's always going to be wide open. Yes. Yeah, so, and that's part of what makes it fun. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing
we'll see how it all shakes out. Okay, so we will see. Next week, uh, we'll be back with Mark, and uh, can't wait to hear how it all is going to play out on the podcast uh, next week. All right. Uh, Brennan, great job. Thank you very much. Uh, do you want a hashtag for this episode? Yes, what do you got? Well, it, I'm disappointed that we can't find a way to work hashtag win a date with Platt Hamilton into any podcast. But I saw you favorited that. Yes, yeah, so if, we, if we want something a little more uh, on, on point, we could do a hashtag uh, second squirt. Second squirt. All right, good. Yes. I think you say hashtag Tina is a constellation. Oh, uh, that's all. We, I, I hashtag every tweet with that, so I think that would be a little redundant. So. All right, yeah, I don't want it to be redundant. All right. Brendan, uh, great job, and uh, thanks, thanks again. Thanks so much, Rob.